you have any special difficulty in, in dating Elvis? Uh, how did it affect you? Not really, you? no. I, maybe because of my youth or whatever. I'm a very adaptable person, and it just sort of seemed very right and very natural. When you love someone, they suddenly, you know, it wasn't Elvis on the marquee anymore. It was Elvis with the little E. You know, mm -hmm. it was just a human soul that I happened to love. What were dates with Elvis like? Dates with Elvis consisted of riding golf carts around Graceland or riding motorcycles or three-wheelers or going to movies uh, that he had rented out. He would rent an entire theater out and show movies all night. And uh, he enjoyed going roller skating occasionally. He would uh, rent the fairgrounds out and ride the roller coaster 15 times in a row, that sort of thing. But he would never, ever go anywhere in disguise or try to go... No, no, yeah. incognito. Yeah. Because he had his own walk, he had his own stance, you know, there was no way that he could really disguise who he was. Not effectively. We tried going out a few times shopping, and we would make it halfway between the car and the door of the store. And, you know, people would just be all over us. They would converge immediately, and we would have to run back to the car. So it was very difficult for him to get out like a normal person. When do you think Elvis felt the, the need to be so generous? It almost got to be second nature with him, you know. It was just um, a facet of his character, you know, like um, drinking a lot of water or whatever, you know. He, that was just part of his, his nature. And it was, it was really astounding if you just sat back and pondered for a few moments about the extent of his generosity. It was incredible. And it began, he told me the story, and I think it's really a sweet little story, when he was nine years old. He said that he got saved in the Christian sense. And he, all he had, they were very, very poor in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis's family. He said he was dirt poor. And he suddenly was just filled with this wonderful spirit. And all he had in the world were comic books. So he took all of his comic books and he ran out into the street and he started giving his comic books away to all his little neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what a, what a really sweet story that, because that generosity never stopped. You know, that's, that spirit of giving stayed with him throughout his life. What kinds of things bothered him? What kind of things did he like to talk to you about? I think probably the thing that bothered him most was that he was an intensely lonely person at heart. He felt that, you know, he was so alone in his fame mm -hmm. and in his, uh, in his thoughts, as we all are. I often said to him, gosh, you know, you, you possess so much love. So many people love you in so many different ways. And he said, but you don't understand it's not a personal love. They don't know me. They don't know what goes inside, what goes on inside me, you know, what my thoughts are, what my feelings are, what my background is. You know, they know what they've read and they love me and I appreciate that love, but they don't love me in a personal way. So it was important to him to have people around that he felt did love him in a personal way.